Fox News alert. The new inflation report is worse than expected for the third month in a row. President Biden is treating the economic emergency like he does with these things. You know, he's trying to convince an entire nation it's not happening. It's clear he does not know what groceries cost, or maybe he does and he doesn't care. He'll have to tell us. Critics say Biden is straight up gaslighting Americans about the economy. Overall, prices are way up since he took office. We know this. He pushed the term Bidenomics and then ran away from the lie of it all. And yesterday, he was out defending his policies. We have dramatically reduced inflation from 9% down to close to 3%. We're in a situation where we're better situated than we were when we took office, where we, inflation was skyrocketing. And we have a plan to deal with it. OK, again, I don't know what he experiences. But in January of 2021, you see the little arrow there on the far left of your screen out of all the, those bars. Do you know what inflation was when Trump left? 1.4%. Remember last summer, it was cooking three times that, four times that. At one point, it was 9%. It climbed that to that in June of 2022. Former President Donald Trump didn't hold back. He posted this on, social, on Truth Social. Inflation is back and raging. The Fed will never be able to credibly lower interest rates because they want to protect the worst president in history of the United States. Later in the day, Trump stopped in an Atlanta Chick-fil-A. We covered all this live for you. We showed you his speech. At the Chick-fil-A, he picked up the tab for everybody eating at the restaurant. Bought him some shakes, too, from what I understand. Axio says March's inflation report spells bad news for Biden. And the New York Post cover sums it up. One word, swamped. It says Americans are drowning in high prices. And forget Bidenomics. They're coining it Bidenflation. Republican Senator Marco Rubio of the great state of Florida, Intelligence Committee vice chairman, is in focus now. So all lie revealed. We're in trouble. The numbers are going back up in the wrong way. And that 3.5 percent, Senator, as we know, doesn't even include food and energy. That's like a baseline right. inflation. Yeah, so a couple things. It's very misleading when he says it used to be at 9%. You know, what, this is compounding, right? So this is not like it went exactly. down from 9 to 3. This is building month after month. The better way to think about it, it's about over close to 19, about 18, 19% over the last three years. That's how prices have grown for people. In some markets and in some places, Florida, for example, has an even higher rate. Uh, I happen to live in what I believe is the first, or right after Honolulu, the most expensive community in America with regards to inflation. And one of the things that's driving it now is auto insurance is on top of that. But I think the one thing to look at, which is the numbers that came out the day after, is the production costs, right? The manufacturing costs, the, uh, the, 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 what they call the wholesale inflation, what it's costing to make things. That's gone up. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But at the core, inflation is about this. You have X number of things to sell and a lot more people to buy it or a lot more money chasing it. And so the only answer to that is you have to increase production or you have to raise interest rates to suck the money out of the economy. But who pays the interest rates? Well, Ooh. the beneficiaries are the savers, but the people who get killed by it are people that have credit card debt or any debt. People are trying to buy a home, anything That's of right. that nature. And I think uh, President Trump is absolutely right. At no time in the foreseeable future will interest rates be able to come down if this continues. And Biden sounds tone deaf. He's going out there. Yeah, I think he stopped saying Bidenomics, but he's going out there bragging about stuff, and people are like, what is this guy talking about? This guy's out of his mind. Well, yesterday, he, he forgot what century he was in, so he thought he was in the 20th century, and, and maybe for part of that century, the prices were what he remembers. But yeah. that's not what we we're experiencing today. He did eventually correct it. But anyway, uh, what I appreciate so much, and I hope the audience does now, too, is that compounding interest. You compared what we, as grocery shoppers, buying everything else, not just food, are going through, it's like having a credit card at all times in our lives. Yeah, I mean, if you go back to, you think about all the things that are driving it. First of all, they spent over, oh, close to over $2 trillion of government money. Some of it hasn't even been spent yet. So that's more money pumped into the economy, Oof. government spending. So that's part of it. Then you've got all these regulations that they're putting on, whether it's environmental regulations or what have you, that's raising the cost of production. And then I think we have a systemic issue that we have to confront long term, and that is our ability to produce things in this country. We have to get back to being a country that can make things mm -hmm. down the supply chain because otherwise we become very vulnerable to any sort of disruption. If there's a war somewhere, if there's a pandemic, or if some enemy tries to close, uh, you know, cut us off from something. 
So um, that, that's sort of a, something we need to focus on architecturally in terms of the economy. But the other things about the government spending and the driving of it, I mean, we predicted inflation was going to happen. That's exactly what we're seeing. And the yeah. cost of inflation, the price of inflation isn't just when you go pay for things. It's also in the interest rate because that's the only remedy the Fed has to try to suck money out of the economy. But it is killing, and I mean killing people who have to put things on credit cards or yeah. who are trying to buy a home. Yeah. All right, we'll move to this. Uh, another big problem, and we'll see if House Republicans uh, can handle what's happening. House Republicans had to delay the delivery of the Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, Mayorkas uh, impeachment articles. And some of your Senate colleagues are now reportedly promising maximum pain if leader Chuck Schumer refuses a trial. And they're talking of stalling legislative business until they get to that impeachment trial of Mayorkas. Many are expecting Senator Schumer to table or simply dismiss the impeachment articles. And Mayorkas, during a DHS budget hearing yesterday, finally admitted this under oath. Mr. Secretary, um, you dance around calling the, um, the crisis at our southern border uh, not only a humanitarian crisis, but a crisis. Congresswoman, um, I do understand the challenges at the border, and I certainly don't dance around them, as a matter of fact. Would you call I it a crisis at the southern border? Yes, I would. President Biden is now apparently mulling over an executive action on the border, and that's after months of claiming he could not do anything because he didn't have the power. He, had to, he could not secure it without Congress. The White House says no final decision has been made yet. Former President Trump says, quote, Biden has flooded our country with tens of millions of illegal aliens. Do not be fooled by any phony Biden executive order, end quote. Senator, your reaction? My reaction is that what he can do executive orders. He always can because there was Trump executive orders that were in place. On the day he took over, he repealed them in addition to announcing we wouldn't be deporting anybody. And all he has to do is go back to that. But he, he can't, he, now he's trapped because to do that would be to admit that Trump was right. And it happens to be who he's running against for president. And so that's the trap he's now in. Remember, that, you know, he bragged about it on the campaign trail, how he was mm -hmm. going to repeal all those things. He did. And that's when this thing kicked off. Nine million, over nine million now people have entered our country in three years, over the last three years illegally. It all began when he repealed those Trump measures. So the executive orders he needs to put back in place are those. He's always had the power to do it. He had the power to repeal them. He has the power to reinstate them. But to do it means going to war with another element of his left-wing base and the open borders crowd and it would mean admitting that Trump was right. And so I think they're trying to figure out how they can thread that needle without admitting Trump was right. But Trump was right. He's going to have to tuck in his ego. I mean, that is ridiculous. And, and I'm, I'm certain that you're right, because it, it now has become a war of words for this president instead of taking the action that we all know that he can. We'll cover it every day that it makes news, and just about every day it is making news. Senator Rubio, thank you for being in thank focus. You. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.